have to ask, how long, and I don't know this, so how long has the band been together? We've been together three years, going on into our fourth year. Oh, it's only been that long? So when I came, wait, so when I came to Broad Run, it was your first year? Yep. Mm-hmm. You're kidding. I mean, yeah. a long way, and I figured that you guys had been together for a lot longer than that. Um, so well, it started out ish. like... We've been serious for that long. Like, it started out as, um, I was in another band, and this was a side acoustic project, just me and Brandon. And then I quit that other band, and I was like, okay, I'm going to focus on this, and then Zach came along. And I was in that other band. That he yeah. Oh, you were? Okay. Because I was always, always wondered, like, how that worked with the was <coughs> from Heritage, and... Let's see. It's like an intertwined thing. It started out, I was a drummer in this one band. You guys, really, of all the bands I know around this area, you guys probably do, it seems like, the most work and the best job of promoting, right? I mean, you guys are pretty hardcore when it comes to that. Um, that's yeah. all him. Hardcore. That's yeah, all you. I, uh... <laughs> I just gotta show up to shows. I... To be honest. I really want... Up. Yeah, I really want to have a feature with this, so I kind of, um... They don't, but I <laughs> beat the crap out of it. I, I, uh, push us into the recording studio, I push us into shows, I push us into ticket sales, I push us into promoting, getting all of our friends out there, spreading the word, um, it's a lot of work. Yeah. What happened with Facebook that made it uncool? Because I don't know. They um, honestly, what I what drew me away from Facebook is probably that they kept making changes that nobody wanted. Okay. Like if you asked for a change in the chat, they would give you a change in the homepage. And if you wanted a change in the home page, homepage. Okay. I'll edit that. So do do the chat. Uh, this is a change in the chat and homepage. Yeah. If you wanted like a change in the homepage, then they'd change your newsfeed and all this stuff that you just didn't really want. I see that happening now on YouTube. People are, like you yeah, trying to like point. they're trying to simplify their look when really that's not. It what looks really. Wants. It's really not a good look. I hate to say, it, but it's not the the personalization of their channel is gone once you uh, once they make your block like this big. Yeah. You know, it used to be like when I first went on YouTube. You had friends page. on there, and there's all yeah. kind of cool stuff. Yeah, we then had it cut it down, and now it's... And then it just went to subscribers, and now it's like... A box. You can subscribe. No, okay, subscribe about your music. Yeah. I'm going to ask this a while, a while back. Did you start writing your own stuff early on? I started writing in 7th grade, and <laughs> and I, I actually don't look back on it a lot, but I know how bad it was. And um, I look at the stuff I write now, and I see a huge difference. Like, um, we have a new song, Escape. It's, um, we don't usually have like this kind of sound, but it's it's heavy. It's it's a lot heavier than what we normally play, and um, the lyrics are completely different from when I went to like rhyming rock star with car. I now rhyme like <laughs> like uh, first line in escape is like who knew that growing up would become a catastrophe? It all seems so damn brilliant. It all seems so damn good to me. But now that I've grown older, my shadows what's scaring me. Is it the darkness stuck within, or is it something I can't yeah, see? Yeah, there's no doubt. Like you're right. It's mature. I mean, obviously, when you get older, yeah, you know, everything's just, gonna mature. Your it sound. just comes, and um, it's more you have to aim for the the bigger sound as opposed to the simplicity. As much as like pop music is centered towards simplicity and catchy beats. Um, you go, if you aim for a bigger sound as opposed to simpler lyrics, the the melody is what's going to carry the song. So your bigger sound's coming from Zach, I assume, right? For a drum, is it, are you saying the drums are heavier and the guitars are bigger? Um, or? It tastes like I'd a combination. Say, I'd say like it is heavier and bigger, but we also have a lot of our slower songs on um, what we're working on right now. We're working on an album. Um, like, we have stuff like Escape and Drama Queen, which is really fast, really heart-driven, but then we have songs like Homecoming and Don't Let Go, right? And those are slower, um, softer, more heart-touching songs, because um, I try to write from the heart to something that everyone can Those are to. the songs I think really that sell, right? Yeah. If you know, what do you, like, out of your music, what seems to do the best? The Badadas. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, our most popular song right now is the one where the chorus is literally just Ba da 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 da. It's Wait. catchy. It's exactly. Yeah, right. it's the catchy ones. <laughs> and it's amazing because you work so hard to try. Like you, the lyrics of that song are amazing. You're, you're, is it Escape? Uh, escape. Yeah, but we haven't released that one yet. But I'm, I'm just like those lyrics compared to like that just shows you. Yeah. The public really. And also, Zach wrote <laughs> counted. I did not. I wrote. I wrote that song and like. Just, 
four in the morning. I wrote it the Bada does. <laughs> I wrote I wrote the Bada does. does. I wrote it the Bada does. But the crowd just loves, right, when you do this. Oh yeah, like, you sing along to that. Anytime yeah. you get like get really your listeners engaged in your music, that's what you want. And that's um that's not easy to do. A lot of bands won't do that because they want to have their sense of while we're kind of aloof from you. Right. A lot of bands I think these days like to keep like we're a band, you're the crowd, we'll play these songs for you, but there's a distance between us. But as most you people as most crowd. people have seen with us, we get into the crowd. Literally but, over yeah. the barrier. Probably one of the coolest things I've seen at Youth Fest was when you guys played that you went up and did what, three songs? Mm-hmm. Um, at the battle, the last battle of Firehouse. Oh, yeah. And you just destroyed. Oh, that probably couldn't have been any better placed in any Youth Fest event we've had since I've been with it for five years. That, those few moments of you guys playing those songs was absolutely perfect. You got up there and you did, you couldn't have planned it any better because it seemed like your songs were short, but they were the perfect songs. And then we practiced the set list once. once. And, and then we, we went and played We didn't even practice yeah, them. We played them a lot, but like, I think at that point we didn't play a show for like a month. Well, now our shows are pretty spaced in like month intervals, but um, which is good actually for now. Yeah, at that <laughs> point, um, I think it's safe to say we all missed the battles. Oh, so we yeah, had a lot okay. of fun with the battles the year before and the year before that, and uh, we missed um, the battles. Yeah. So to get invited back to play that, we were like, we're not getting judged this time, so let's just. Let's just make this as fun as possible for the audience. So and you were so loose, in. and it, it was just, and we were talking about it last night. This is it shows, a lot of people think we're really arrogant, but then they get to know us and they're like, wow, no, we were completely wrong. Yeah, you know, musician is wrong. Yeah. You're this or you're that. Um, another thing you guys have really strong is obviously your vocals, the harmonies, and I mean really, I would say, Zach, I would dare say Zach's one of the best harmonizers. I. Because I gotta think back since I've been on my face. Um, what, what about next year? What happens? Uh, we're back to the battles. I was gonna say, because I just it just dawned on me. What do you do? You're not gonna be like, okay, we're, we retired. No, way. no, no retire. there's no way we're retiring from Youth Fest. Um, I mean, if we don't make it next year, we don't make it. I understand. There's a lot of awesome bands. I'm gonna oh, yeah. see all of the battles. Yes. There's a lot of. There really is a lot. Of, like this, this year's really like really weird. Like when Disengage didn't make it, the yeah. Dustwell. Oh, and Dustwell. Was I, I, I was like, I was stunned. I was, I was stunned, stunned like, as well. That first battle was just like almost like this the biggest upset of the century. We were right. like, wait a minute. And then the um, Brandon's band, the um, reggae band. Yeah. They didn't make it, and I thought they did really well that night. It was just a freakish night. Yeah. And, but the one, bands that came in. Once see. I found out that Dusk Oils and Disengage didn't make it, I can tell you right there, I was like, I'm prepping for next year's battles right now. Yeah. And you can ask them, we are already prepping for next year's battles. We, we already have now. set lists. We've been working <laughs> on the Youth Fest oh, set lists since, since, like, we finished Youth Fest last year, I think. Yeah. That's really great to know. We've picked the songs. We've had those songs picked out. Yeah, we've had, yeah, we've had, had well, back. we've, um, <laughs> Oh, we knew we were closing with the song that we are closing with right now. Um, and then we had the the two originals. <laughs> yeah, we're playing two originals and uh, Bada and of course we have the crowd favorite. I can't yeah. Just, and um, just, our favorite, Better Off Dead is one of our favorites. It's not. It's like heavy, but it's also poppy. Um, I think that's why we like it. And there's just this awesome pre-chorus that we fell in love with as soon as we wrote it. Well, I'm just, I'm really excited. It's just, this year is just, there's no doubt that the energy level this year is way beyond what it's ever been. And next year, I'm going to push. Uh, well, Mayday Parade is just humongous crowd. We saw yeah. Mayday Parade. Especially since we're so close to the hometown. Yeah, we saw Mayday Parade open up for All Time Low. Two weeks Two ago, weeks. one week ago. Oh, you did? Yes. Yeah. All Time Low sounds great live. Like, their sound is perfect, their crowd interaction is perfect. They put on a crowd interaction show as opposed to, like, a live action show. Mayday Parade, sh- Mayday Parade shows... They interact with the crowd, they get in your face, they scream the lyrics at your face, but they also do super cool tricks, and not to mention Alex Garcia, their lead guitarist, is crazy. That dude has so many riffs that I could not even dream of playing. And um, just when I saw them live, I was like, all right guys, take note, because we gotta be more like that. No, that's good, that's good to know that that's coming our way. And uh, we just actually finished our band practice before we came here, and um, we played the youth fest set. And <laughs> Do you ever run into this thing where the rehearsal before your performance is the worst you've ever played in your life? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Every practice. What Actually, is that? It's um, like horrible. The thing that we have a history with is getting to the venue and breaking a string, breaking your guitar, breaking everything. Um, oh, yeah, that's true. There is, I don't want to talk about it. Okay. Hi, we're just another scene. This is a new song called A Perfect The End. Yeah. 
promise you that even after the battle stroke, I won't be a disaster. And I'm trying to be strong, but it's hope is so rough in my head. Awesome. Do you like the one acoustic? Yeah. Yeah, it's goofy fun. <clears throat>